lot happening in Web3 Gaming and two blockbuster projects are starting to move into the ZK EVM space. I know that might sound a little weird for you, but you guys will want to watch this one for sure. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path, And we'll break down two projects today that are moving into what we think might be the evolution of where Web3 Gaming is going. If you look at the ZK EVM platforms in general, what you've got is a lot of growth right now. Granted, this is still early. And you have to also remember that much of this is just now beginning. This, of course, this is the Polygon ZK EVM total value locked over time. So you can kind of see a little bit there, including the poll token, uh, which is new. And I want to break this down for you guys so you kind of understand what some of these projects are and the kind of impact they're going to have. Because there's a, a, a pretty big shift here on not only how gaming is, be, is going to be done, but some of the projects that are going to kind of break through the glass ceiling. I want to go to a clip here about a project called Space Nation. Listen in. Space Nation is a next generation transmedia IP that tells the story of humanity's second chapter following our great escape from planet Earth. That journey begins this fall with the release of the upcoming MMORPG Space Nation Online. And animated shorts, spin-off games, and an epic TV series will follow. A soft launch will follow this summer ahead of a global launch this fall on PC and mobile. I was the very first product manager for World of Warcraft in China and launched the game back in 2005 in China. So I've been working on some other titles, including all the Blizzard titles and also Guild Wars 2, also World of Tanks and World of Warships in China. But now I'm uh, fully in Web3 gaming, be more specifically Web3 MMRPG, all in Space Nation right now. In the regular gamers, you can go for all kinds of different gameplay. You can go for PvP, you can go for PvE, you can go for crafting, you can go for exploration. For play to earn users, no matter you are from Web 2 or Web 3, you can go for mining. Um, that's all doable in our game. Now, some of the things that are a bit different here in how this may actually become is moving into maybe a new dynamic of how Web3 Gaming is going to be done. I'm looking at a post here from Sam Altman. This, of course, is the uh, co-founder of OpenAI. Movies are going to become video games, and video games are going to become something unimaginably different. And that is probably going to be seeded with AI, but I think also just the cultural aspect of how movies are going to transcend themselves into maybe a different kind of component here. Now, Roland Emmerich, you may recognize the name. He is the director, one of the directors of um, Stargate. You probably remember him from that. And then he's done a lot of other sci-fi sci movies as well. I want you to listen to this clip right here. Take a look. Roland, obviously, I mean, he's a master of the world builder, and he um, worked on the... Uh, the, the, the storyline, the worldview, and the bring the worldview of Space Nation to another level. It's uh, pretty much here you know, like you go out into space because aliens are coming. So that means, you know, you have to leave Earth because everybody else will get killed. We want to kind of have uh, a prequel how this all came to be. Uh, I, I really, really believe in it. And so that means uh, maybe the first three, four months, you know, you like show it only on Web3 and then, uh, then you go out to, to the people. And maybe also partly uh, finance it through Space Nation. I made like 25 years ago a movie called Stargate and it spawned like incredible you know, like, kind of, I think there were two or three spin-off uh, TV shows, uh, which uh, lasted maybe for 10 years, and then it kind of slowly uh, vanished. And, uh, and uh, I try to repeat that. The, the, the TV industry itself has totally changed. There is really no new uh, science fiction show on television. Maybe, maybe Apple to take a side, but Netflix will not, you know, make these like super expensive um, uh, kind of uh, programs anymore because they will like all cut back and back and back because, you know, they, they have to live off, you know, uh, subscribers and subscribers constantly want to have new stuff. I think another way to do it is like the way we want mm -hmm. to go with uh, a Space Nation. I think this will take two, three years. Right. I mean, to be, I mean, to be the show really on live for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this will be 
at one, at one point, you know, maybe like kind of a, a community where other games get created, you know, and we are only like the distribution of it. Uh, I, I really believe that. Look, for example, Pokemon has like so many characters. And that's what we want to do too. We want to have like many, many characters and they have their own stories and they have their own life, uh, emotions, etc. You look at what's happening on OpenSea under Space Nation. This is, of course, just some of the characters that he's mentioning here of what this might go into. And the interesting point here is that because we've seen kind of Web3 become gaming, become the innovation point for next generation, even though Web2 gaming is still very, very innovative, I think what we're seeing now and understanding is that there's a lot moving in this direction. So that being said, um, here's another good example right here. Wagme, of course, just announced a partnership with Anime Studio Powerhouse Animation. This is a big deal because animation has been doing a lot just with Netflix, et cetera. Here's Castlevania. Yeah, many of you guys will recognize Master of the Universe, Sonic, etc. These are all uh, powerhouse animation uh, assets and IP. And could there be a new, we'll call it metaverse, that starts to rise out of a lot of this innovation? A couple of these projects, whether it's Space Nation and others, uh, that we're uh, going to be sharing with you guys today. I want to go to another clip here, because uh, this talks a little bit about how this will move into other IP partnerships on Space Nation. Take a look. So recently, we announced our collaboration with uh, Ape Accelerator, and we are going to uh, core distribute an NFT with them. And this is mainly entertaining the Ape holders, right? And then what we're going to do is not just an NFT. So what we, we, will, we will actually create an Ape alien, an Ape-featured planet in our game. People who do exploration can find them. And they will have Ape-like alien NPCs, Ape alien uh, NFT crews and even ape alien like featured spaceships in our game, and then we are trying to do this for other other parties, but but we will be very selective, right? Say so we we are we are planning to do something for immutables, so people will see a faction in our game with immutables. We are trying to discuss this with uh, uh, penguins, with uh, Neo Tokyo, with uh, Mary Circle. We have a lot of NFT fully completed. But we are not selling it. It's, it, it that's going to be quick money, easy money we can make. But our decision is actually most of the ships will be constructed by the players in the game with the materials and minerals they collect from the game or they purchase from the others. Then the ship will be built in, in the shipyard. And once the ship is built, it's an NFT and can be traded. Usually it takes a lot of time to to explain to the to the VCs. and uh, That's why we, we, we stopped doing that because they were like, Hey, you guys are not crypto native enough, or oh, this is I never seen this. This is too risky, right? So yeah. Now I'm like kind of uh, feeling the pressure uh, to kind of uh, deliver. <laughs> now, Epic Games and Microsoft, I would say, are two of the titans most likely to be platform, so to speak, of where this is going to go in the future. I want to play a clip about that because this will show the transition. Listen in. Do you see Space Nation eventually becoming a metaverse? Yeah, I, I've been very conservative on the, using the word metaverse. Most of the companies or most of the teams that claim they're doing metaverse now, they are not that, I mean, they're not ready. It's companies like Microsoft, I mean, that's the reason they acquired Blizzard, right? And uh, they are doing some crazy stuff. If you guys go and uh, look at what kind of company they invested, you will realize they are not a game company. They are looking for, they are they're, they're, they're trying to build the metaverse. And um, companies also like Epic, what they are doing in the past few years, they are, they are unifying the format of those files together with like Autodesk. This is this, this, this kind of, the, those are the fundamental thing that the future metaverse need, right? I think a lot of people would look at it and say, well, you know, Paul, this is, you know, Web3 Gaming, it's really not that big a deal out there, if you look at the number of active video gamers worldwide, this is 2015 to 23, going up to over 3 billion, that's right, billion people that are playing games online, whether it's mobile games, console games, etc. what we'll see in browser, all that kind of stuff. The next generation, I think, is going to get a lot more inclusive because I think it's going to bring people into these ecosystems that have never been in gaming before. And I think that's the big uh, part of this that you have to kind of take a look at. 
Another uh, clip I want to go to, our sponsor today, uh, is Wilder World. And this breaks down a little bit more about where they're going. Also, another project out there that lies into what's happening in building a metaverse ecosystem. Listen in. I met the guys last year and uh, really fell in love with the project. And um, the guys who are putting together are doing it for the right reasons. They're building something that I think everybody wants to see, which is a metaverse. And we're actually on the mission to create that, which is fantastic. But I was able to work on Grand Theft Auto V and Grand Theft Auto Online. I've also worked on a project uh, that's really big in the, um, you know, in terms of innovation and getting bigger called Star Citizen, in terms of going straight through Kickstarter and bringing, it to, bringing the game to the fans. And so it's a dream to work on a metaverse. So when I was able to meet with Frank and Neil and they explained to me what they were trying to do, I realized that in order to build the metaverse, We've got to take the best stuff from game development and AAA, what we've learned over this time, and bring it to the expertise in the Web3 community. And if we can bring the best of both of these worlds, that's what it's going to take to build a metaverse. So for us, it was, OK, boom, let's do this. Let's make uh, 1v1 racing. Let's get the racing sims to make it as immersive as possible. Then once we've got that, next is going to be building out the city, right? Once the city's been built out, that's going to be the vision for Miami. Once Miami's done, we can do another city. You know, that's where Wild World comes in. This is a simulation because we want to see how digital societies can interact together and how they can be formed. So what you're seeing there is a little bit of interaction, you know, with this. And if you go over to OpenSea, there's the one of the digital assets that they're uh, blowing in. This, of course, being Wild World. And I think that is, again, gets back into some pretty innovative uh, components around where Web3 is going. Wild World now is building on Polygon CDK. They're going to scale this in the gaming metaverse, uh, obviously with Celestia underneath. All right, so additionally, they will have a gas-free future. This is a big deal for obvious regions. Ca gas is a big part of the pain of Web3 and the pain of crypto in general. And what we'll see now, I think, going to the next level is some of the really immersive games start to break out. And that's the key here. If we get one really breakout game, could it be Wilder World? that is one of these that really kind of marries that other side of the gaming ecosystem. Remember those 3 billion gamers and then the growth of new gamers coming in. This will be interesting to watch. Further out here, Frank, of course, has been on, this is uh, over at Wilder World, just uh, hit the top 100 wish listed games on Epic Games in only three days. So this releases and already, or gets ready to release and already it's on as one of the top 100 wish listed. To me, that shows demand. Uh, two is I think it shows the quality of the game itself and the concept of where it's going. The fact that they're drawing in people from traditional gaming into building their ecosystem and their projects uh, is pretty uh, amazing. All right, so looking at their roadmap, the Meow Chain, uh, Meow Chain ZK EVM testnet is starting to roll out. Further into this, I want to kind of scooch down here to the bottom. What I want you to pay attention to is this one right here. And this is desktop applications. You can kind of see their progress, Windows, Mac, Linux, et cetera. And then you see iOS and Android almost complete right there. And then even Apple Vision Pro. So a lot of aggressiveness around where their roadmap is going, which is, is good. Remember, all of this being built on metagra metagravity or built with met metagravity. Uh, this, of course, is with Star Atlas. While we're, and the key there, of course, is to scale to simultaneous players, being able to really scale that as a big growth. And we talked about this with Michael Wagner uh, and I, f I see a future ahead. Let me kind of zoom in on that. I see a future ahead where there's some integration with Wyami and other Wild World team. Uh, this is, of course, when we were talking with Mike Wagner over at Star Atlas. So good, good news for all of this. I think the bigger picture is still Web3 is coming. I want to go over to another clip. And this one is a little bit different because it gets into how it's affecting really kind of, you know, mainstream, everyday people uh, out there. This is actually the mayor of Miami, Florida. Listen in. Uh, it, it is, there are generational opportunities that are before us. And we have options as cities and as Miami. Uh, cities that have even preeminence, right, uh, in terms of industrial preeminence, when there's a major disruption, if they don't pivot uh, during that time, they can not only fall behind, but they can actually um, suffer some significant consequences. And I think Miami uh, has identified those opportunities. Uh, we have gone all in. And I think this sister city relationship, um, you know, with Miami 
is is one of those uh, you know opportunities, and that um, allowed us to to do probably a, a decade worth of growth in 24 months. I mean, we've moved a trillion four hundred billion in AUM, and we grew our uh, VC uh, um, our VC pipeline what two hundred percent in um in uh in about one year and so you know even doing this this sister city you know announcement with wyami you know it's it, it it's in the same category right it's saying look we want to be one step ahead of everybody else while everybody is sort of trying to figure out what miami is doing we want to be already innovating at the next level mm -hmm. uh, we think that that's how fast our world is being disrupted and that's how how fast we have to be to stay ahead of that disruptive curve and to stay in the mainstream. I mean, we are in 2022 and people are still talking about it, right? I mean, think about how difficult that is to just garner the attention of the world. I've been around the Middle East. I've been around uh, different parts. Everybody's heard about what's happening in Miami, everyone in the world. So Miami is an interesting space because uh, with blockchain being a big part of it, uh, it has a lot of similarities to maybe the birth of Silicon Valley. And if you think about Web3 and in general what's happening in blockchain and the innovation level, especially in everything from, you know, uh, going into, you know, the conversion of digital assets. We look at what's happening with companies like Securitize, also based down here. There's a lot of innovation that is already here. And I think gaming will be a big part of this. It's a very creative city with Art Basel, much of that creator economy that's already out there. I want to go to this last clip. This is Frank Wilder talking about why this could be one of those that sticks around for a long time. Listen in. A lot of the stuff happening in the previous run was like heavily theory driven and it was people with an idea and they were just kind of pushing that thing without understanding maybe what it actually looks like to build that thing. And I think oftentimes like building a great product, it's really about being in the details and like there's also like I think a standard now. Previously you didn't know who was just like blowing hot smoke and who is like the real deal. And I feel like seeing the people who have like kind of stuck through and pushed through and went through the hard, the hard challenging bear market and, and built and put their resources in the right places. That's kind of what we're seeing now, like pull ahead. All right. So from that, you know, ZK Yavim could be one of the potential saviors of what we've seen with network congestion. There's still a lot to be determined because remember, as we start rolling out games, start rolling a lot, a lot of use case and utility on blockchain, we're going to continue to see these challenges. So this is one of those needed technologies for sure. All right. If you guys are not part of the Diamond Circle, make sure and get in right now. It's a great place to get additional content. All you have to do is jump over to our website, which is paulbearnetwork.com. And you can just join right there. Uh, also, if you're not following me on X, do so. It's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.